there and welcome. I'm Jeanette Cosson and today I'm sharing a bit of fall watercoloring as a guest designer for W Plus 9. I'm featuring Autumn Blessings, the Coordinating Dyes, and Hexagon Clear Cut Stackers. To begin, I've got two sunflowers and two leaves from the Autumn Blessings stamp set adjusted to one side of my original Misty. I'm inking up in watercolor friendly pure color black dye ink and stamping on a 6 by 8.5 inch panel of Arches Hot Press watercolor paper. I prefer hot press for its smooth surface that allows for crisp stamped images. Without moving the paper, stamp again with Versamark and heat emboss with ultra fine clear embossing powder. If you'd like to skip this embossing step, that works too. I like to emboss for a few reasons though. In this case, I'm just impatient and I don't want to wait for the watercolor to dry before I can paint the touching panel. Embossing adds extra texture. It also adds wells for color that with some watercolors is really interesting when the pigment dries, it pulls towards the embossed edges and it allows you to use ink for stamping that's not watercolor friendly. The embossing seals in and protects the ink from water. As I mentioned though, pure color inks are watercolor friendly. There are many ways to create. You do what works best for you. Rotate the paper 180 degrees and repeat the process. I repeated this a third and a fourth time with another panel of arches because I had no plan in mind when I began this project. I wanted to just make sure I had plenty of elements and because more options is always better, right? How many pairs of shoes do you take on vacation? Do you wear them all? Yep, me either. So with the extra images, I can create another card. I can give them to my littles to create their own cards with, or I can just use them for another project. So next comes the watercolor. Today I'm using a size four round silver black velvet brush with my Daniel Smith Extra Fine watercolors. I like this particular brush branded style for the nice fine point and how it carries color and water. The Daniel Smith colors I'm using today are transparent red oxide, Aussie red gold, quinacridone purple, quinacridone violet, pyrrolein violet, and sugalite genuine which has a beautiful shimmery granular texture. For my palette I use this white porcelain salad plate from my favorite shop, Target. Maybe you know it. Or maybe you know it as Target? It's just Target's threshold brand and it costs only a few bucks. I do recommend using a white surface to mix your paints on the ability to see the true color value of the pigments makes all the difference. You don't necessarily need to have a dedicated palette or plate though. You could use something as simple as an upcycled clear stamp packaging over a sheet of white printer paper. I just arrange my colors around the sides of the plate, add a few drops of water to each color, and then blend on the plate as needed. Some artists never clean their palettes. I do, almost always. When I'm finished, I usually just wipe the plate off with a wipey, but this plate is dishwasher safe as well. The first color I'm using here is Aussie Red Gold. I add the color as I do nearly all my flowers by placing the pigment at the base of the petal where it would likely be the darkest. And then going around again with a cleanly rinsed brush and blending out with just clear water. I pick up any excess color with a thirsty brush and dab it off on a paper towel. By a thirsty brush, I mean dab off all the excess water from the brush onto a paper towel. Then when I go back to the paper, the brush will suck up the color and the water. If the color won't lift, add a bit of water and gently stroke the area with a brush. Try taking a thirsty brush to the area again and lifting the color. If the color does not lighten, you may be using a liquid ink, a permanent formulation, or possibly a lower quality watercolor or paper. Wetting the area before adding the color may help in lifting and in blending. Let's talk about quality. Paint, brushes, paper. There are a lot of artists out there that can make beautiful paintings with the cheapest products. I don't tend to be one of them. For me, the paper, the brushes, and the paints make a huge difference. Good quality paints and paper are so much more forgiving. And good brushes keep their nice fine point allowing you to use one brush for a much wider range of brush sizes. By that I mean, for example, I can cover a size one through four brushes with this one size four black velvet brush. Where if I were using cheap brushes, I would need each individual size because often the bristles won't stay together and they don't cover well. I recommend using the largest size you can get away with for any particular painting. In the end, it may be more economical to purchase one higher end brush instead of several lower end brushes. But that's just my opinion. Painting, just like all crafting, is a highly personal experience. 
What works for me may not be what works for you, and that's okay. The best way to figure it out is by getting a brush in your hand and going for it. For the darker sunflowers, I added a second layer with transparent red oxide. For the leaves, I simply used a random combination of all the colors on my palette. Sometimes I wet the leaf with clean, clear water first. Sometimes I didn't. Leaves in nature don't all necessarily look the same, so I didn't think it was necessary that mine did either. After allowing all of the images to dry, I die cut them with the Autumn Blessings Companion die cuts. Aren't they just so pretty? I love this W plus 9 oatmeal cardstock. It is ecru in color and has tiny flecks, giving it the look of an organic natural fiber paper. This cardstock is delicate though. The surface can tear easily. So instead of washing taping the dies to the finished panel, I am stacking two layers of the same paper, measured at four inches by five and a quarter inches. In hindsight, scratch paper as the top panel would have been a smarter choice. Tape the hexagon clear stacker dies only to the front panel. Run through your die cutting machine with both the top scratch panel and the bottom finish panel stacked together. The die cutting machine will cut through both layers leaving the finished panel unmarked by tape. Just pop out the negatives for a perfectly unmarred panel. This is also a great way to mass produce cards with multiple die cuts on one panel or even just a die you want in the exact same place each time. Just keep running them through your die cutting machine with the same top panel as a stencil. I like to dry fit my elements in place, tucking and overlapping them until they look good to me. Then I carefully press and place each flower, petal, and even the panel with press and seal kitchen wrap. Lift the elements and flip. The press and seal will keep everything securely in place. Add liquid glue to adhere die cuts to each other, careful not to use so much that it squeezes out the front. Add foam tape to the back to your heart's content. I like to cover the back pretty well so that it prevents dents and dings when it travels through the mail. Remove the release paper from the foam tape, flip card panel back to the front, and carefully pull the press and seal away from the edges of the front of the panel. The ability to clearly see the edges is important in accurate placement on the four and a quarter by five and a half inch oatmeal background panel, which is just a quarter inch larger than the die cut panel, creating an eighth inch border surround. Remember the oatmeal cardstock is delicate and I don't want any of my die cuts to shift, which could happen if the glue is not set up yet. Cautiously remove the remaining press and seal. Add a white heat embossed on black sentiment, also from Autumn Blessings, popped up with foam tape. Adhere sparkly gold sequins in place. I usually like to add a few near the sentiment and then trail off with a few more in odd numbers. Finally, use an interior corner of a misty and liquid glue for perfect placement on an A2 folded card base. This technique works amazingly for dry adhesive as well. Thank you for hanging out with myself, Jeanette Cosson, while I featured Autumn Blessings and Hexagon Clear Cut Stackers by W Plus 9 today. And thank you for the team at W Plus 9 for having me. More information and products are linked in the description box below on YouTube and on the blog. Have an amazing day, and we'll see you soon.